Hello friends. Welcome to my video of unboxing the solar panel. I just literally took it out of the box and I'm exploring it with you. So there's a kickstand here. There's some uh, latches over there in the bottom. What I like is all the stuff that you get with it automatically in this pouch. So this voltage is very important. The bank that we're gonna be using is this Upi's 1000 watt. And that can take up to 200 watts solar panel and take up to 30 volts. So 25.3 is pretty good. However, note that maybe with a lower bank, like I have a 600 watt, it only takes a 24 volt voltage open circuit. So we have this stuff. We have this cable, standard 5521. We have the standard uh, solar cables here. This one, we got the Anderson, Anderson uh, 45. And this 5521 has adapters for different things, including maybe even like a Lenovo laptop adapter. I doubt you could plug a laptop in, but I never tried. If they give you an adapter for it, maybe I should try. That sounds kind of interesting. So that's the wiring. Now let's see how long this wire is. Yeah. Oh, am I twisting it more? Be back. So this cabling is probably about three to four feet. However, this, this adds additional length. So let's see that. Adapter, it's six feet long at least. So is this a decent length to reach your power station? Always a good idea to check the manual. One thing I noticed right away in the manual is this open circuit voltage of 23.5. Meanwhile, on the packaging on the front of this, it said 25.3. So which one is it? I don't know. I would have to check with a voltmeter. Maybe I'll add a note to this stuff. So over here, it's written in different languages. It says tilt the panel that way. Don't do it in the dark. How to put more different panels together. MC4 connectors. Pretty much we know all this stuff. And then it's the other stuff. So it's a quick start guide, which we probably know with uh, solar generators, it's pretty easy. So that's the panel set up over there. I could go show you on the screen that it's generating between 140 to like 143 maximum, maybe 145 I saw. However, it's not the fault of the panels. Uh, what we have over here in, with this solar generator, specifically like this, um, often manufacturers don't list this information. However, I believe from previous experience, I've noticed that this uh, solar uh, the, this um, solar generator, the UPS. 1000 watt has an eight amp limit to that socket uh why do they limit amps is because um when you have so much amps going through uh a wire or something like that and it heats it up so if you put more than let's say 10 or 15 amps through that circular plug the bigger one that's for the upes um you might actually over ramp it so that kind of makes sense. Looking at these, uh, this information over here, it says maximum power voltage. It says 20 volts and open circuit is 23.5. So I think it was a misprint on the back of it. Um, you know, I had this lying around for a while because it was winter time. And uh, I think I've got it on sale or whatever, got whatever discount that Amazon had. So um, I had this in the box for a while. So I literally opened it up with you guys. So that kind of makes sense. If you multiply 20 volts times eight amps, you get like 160 watts. So if it's doing 143 and it could do maximum 160 watts, even though the, the solar panel can do 10 amps, it can only absorb eight amps. The way that this uh, system works is that there's a theoretical maximum of power that this uh, uh, solar generator can take, which is 200 watts. But that's a misnomer because, for example, if you attach it to a lower voltage output, let's say you went in your car and you connected your uh, 
uh, an adapter that goes inside the cigarette lighter, that would probably produce probably 14 volts. So if you multiply 14 by eight, you probably get like 100, 120 watts that this would be charging at. And 120 watts, and if you have a one kilowatt, which is a thousand watts, that would take probably 10 hours via car, or at this 140 rate, we're talking about six hours. That's one of those things that actually I heard uh, that was actually a wise idea, that you should always buy a solar generator that you could charge within five hour time period. Nowadays, they have other ones that have like an AC plug built in, and I've seen them charge at like 1200 watts from your wall outlet. But this is still pretty decent. And what I like about this one and the reason I bought it was that I could actually take a solar panel and take this and carry it outside and set it up where I'm not overloaded. Uh, the one that can take uh, more voltage, for example, the 2000 watt that I have, the Ukitel, uh, it still has a 10 amp limit. So with a 10, 10 amp limit, it would max out at the 200 watt solar panel that it could, let's say 20 volts times 10 amps. Um, so in order to make that one charge up faster, uh, we have to raise the voltage. If you put them in series, what, what that means is that if you to plug in the plus from that one into the minus of the other one, and you use the minus of that one with the plus from this one, the voltage would double. It would be, if you took two, two of these panels, you would have 40 volts and then 40 volts times 10 amps because the amps stay the same when you double the voltage. Uh, you would be able to uh, charge that solar generator that could charge up to 500 watts at 400 watts with two panels. Um, also, one of those things is that you can't, you don't want to over, over um, load this UPES either. So one option is possibly to take like a converter that's uh, called a buck boost and up convert this voltage from 20 volts to 25 volts um that could work to uh charge it optimally uh at that rate uh, i don't remember but perhaps the original charger might actually be 24 volts and that makes sense if it's at 24 volts times 8 amps you get about 200 watts or like 194 and change something like that um 196 uh <sighs> This is pretty good. Uh, let's just check the screen ourselves real quick because I don't want to keep ranting. You see, 131. Um, and I let it charge up for a little while before doing this because it was completely at zero. I had it at zero for months, but watching the news nowadays, I'm realizing that I got to make sure that my equipment works. So I figured I might as well make this video. So long story short, uh, so far, I'm liking the build of this panel. Let's look at it up close. Oh, let's see this partial shading performance. So I'm shaded. I got my butt shading. And how much is it generating? 96. Okay, so one, okay, quarter. It's still generating something. So the reason I bought this is that I have also a previous model which feels a little bit more flimsy. This feels like a better build. This might be called what's called ETFE, some sort of more durable plastic thing that's supposed to stay very well. The bus bars look nice. It feels uh, slightly nicer than the previous panel. Uh, I think the SP022, and I believe this one is called SP035. It has these kickstands reasonably easy to set up and uh yeah so what i need to do in order to continue this test is i need to bring a voltmeter and check what the actual voltage is voltage open circuit uh to uh, prove that my uh, ideas are correct that it's going to say 23.5 and then when it's connected to the uh solar panel it's going to be it's going to drop the voltage down to 20 let's say that's actually charging at 20. Um, and I have this um, charge controller that's up to 20 amps both ways. So technically that would be able to handle this 200 watt uh, panel. However, I have a 12 volt battery that I need to discharge and uh, we might be able to actually get um, a better 
um, information about this panel. So it is working, it is producing that, and the sun, slightly hazy, but I would say almost clear day. Uh, some pretty close to optimal conditions over here. So the open circuit voltage is actually 23.5. I've seen it as high as that. So now we connect this charge controller this is a 20 amp MPPT 12 slash 24 charge controller. And let's pull off this thing, cause it's, it's fun. There you go. And let's pull off the back thing too. Yeah, there you go. So this is how the unit looks like. Now let's connect it. I've made everything into Andersons. So these, this charge control did not come with these Andersons. I just connected them. I find them more convenient. So now let's connect it and let's see how it charges. Hundred forty watts, ten point sixty one, and the voltage dropped to eighteen point seventy volts, seven point eight three amps. That's the sun. So now we're, we know the operating voltage is actually 19 volts. Open circuit is 23.5, like they said. And uh, it's charging that at full 10 amps that the solar panel can put out. 10 amps is 140 watts, that's weird. Huh. 10 amps at what voltage? Oh, input is 148. By the time it gets here, it's 142. Okay. So I'm sitting here for a few minutes figuring this stuff out. So that's the sun up there. Just a slight haze. And uh, over here where we're getting is 149 into the MPPT charge controller, which converts it to a total of 10 amps at 13.4 volts. And you see, it says 10.65 amps at 1331 volts. So this controller still could do more than the, uh, than the uh, solar generator that we were using before. I haven't seen it as high. It's probably at least 10 watts higher. And if we look at the, at the information here, it says peak power is 200 watts plus or minus 5%. So 5%, 10% would be 20 watts. 5% would be 10 watts. So it's plus or minus, so it's between 190 and 210. Um, so right now, and the peak amps is 10 amps. So what we're getting here is eight. At eight, 18.69 volts. So guys, so this solar panel might be actually good for let's say a 600 watt battery bank that takes up to 100 watts input, uh, the 24 volt ones because the voltage open circuit, before we connected everything, that's the voltage open circuit. The reason why that's important is that if you connect it to, a, let's say a solar generator and uh, it's too much voltage, it could fry the equipment inside. So too much voltage fries things. Uh, you can't put too much amps in there because the way that amps work, it's like, a, Imagine a flow gate of a pipe or something like this. So it's not gonna let more amps than it could. So the way that the previous solar generator did was it did maximum of uh, 200 watts uh, and maximum of eight amps. So um, the ideal for that one would be a, uh, a solar panel that's running at 24 vo voltage open circuit. And 24 voltage solar panel would actually be the Blue, a Blue Eddy. Uh, PV200 solar panel. I have that one. I might want to take it out and compare it to see 
what I'm actually getting in regards to solar generation between the two because of the higher um, voltage it allows the bank to actually absorb more energy and achieve the higher potential but here because we have a 20 amp MPPT this thing is actually pretty cool so the way usually these uh, controllers work is that it can take maximum 20 amps in tw maximum 20 amps out like I told, told you like a faucet valve like it's not gonna let more than that amount in so if th the ideal goal is that this voltage is higher than the battery voltage because let's say if this voltage was lower let's say if it, if it was 12 volts and the battery was let's say 13.4 uh i'm not i'm not even sure if, if that would charge because you need a higher voltage so it would take more amps from this side in order to charge it at that um so this controller can do up to 30 volts and this is the first time i'm using it and uh, it could do up to 30 volts if you're doing up to uh, a 12 for a 12 volt uh, system. So 30 volt open circuit. This one's 23.5, which is fine. This is actually I do because most panels are actually um, uh, maximum 30 volts that are 200 watt panels. So the reason why I actually made two cables here is that so that I can connect two. 100 watt solar panels in parallel to it and get the maximum uh, 20 amps that it could put into the battery bank. Um, it's charging pretty good. And uh, yeah, it's awesome to have these controllers. So uh, really we're charging at 144. There seems to be a conversion efficiency loss, obviously 145, let's say. And on this side, we're looking at 152. So seven watts is getting eaten up by converting the electricity. So um, should we be looking maybe at this one, 152? So it's, it's giving me 80% of uh, the hypothetical maximum, maximum power. I'm actually pretty happy with that. Um, so perhaps in this situation, if I wanted to really max out the situation, uh, 145 watts, I would probably take a second panel that's of a similar voltage connected right here. And I would be charging at uh, the maximum 200 watts all day long or 20 amps. Wait, uh, 20 amps at 14 volts. That's actually 280 watts. If I connect the second panel about this voltage, I will be able to get up to maybe even uh, maybe 250 watts out of this guy. So, so far, I'm pretty happy with it. I like this is nice and bulky. Um, not really even feeling it warm up maybe at the center a little bit so so far it's doing good i also have a video with um the smaller version of this one which is the 10 amps what i like about this one is that it doesn't have all those stupid gimmicks like with the bluetooth and the wi-fi's it has a version with the bluetooth and wi-fi i just didn't buy that one i like that they give you the option to do that that knowing that some people don't care about looking at stupid apps on their phone that they're going to use once I'd rather have like a little screen like this and just look at my meters like this than uh, get a Bluetooth Wi-Fi app. So perhaps maybe the ideal thing for this one because I'm getting only 145 watts to get another 145 watts in here and charge at the maximum rate with two 200 watt panels because they're probably producing only 80% maybe because of haze or maybe it has to get warmer, who knows. So overall, I'm happy with this all powers SP035, this charge controller and this build hard battery pack. Check out what I did with it. You see, I, I made Anderson connectors for all of them. Uh, got heavy duty, uh, extra long um, M8 screw terminals. And uh, now I can connect up to 30 amps to each one of these ports. And there are six ports over here. So this is very convenient. So this is why I believe uh, battery banks, this illustrates um, actually blow um, battery packs out of the water because, uh, you know, the solar generators out of the water because I get, I could put more amps into this. The, the more charge controls I could do, let's say I connect six of these guys at 300 watts, I'm only limited at the charge rate that it could do. I think a maximum of 100 amps. So 100 amps at 
12 to 14 watts, that's like, what, 1,000 watts, 1,200 watts, 1,400 watts? So that's kind of cool. Um, so testing it all out and uh, having a lot of fun. Comment below and subscribe.